So I've got this nice collection of steel tubes because I'm going to be making the exhaust. Stick around, this one's going to be a lot of fun. G'day folks and welcome to Turbo Build. My name is Brendan and as always it's fantastic to have you here. So yes, I've got myself a bunch of 3 inch steel tubing to make up the exhaust system from the back of the turbo's downpipe. So let's get stuck into it because this is going to be an absolute blast. Now before we get into the nitty gritty of putting this all together, let me run you through what I'm working with and why I've opted for these particular components. I've got a small assortment of mandrel bends, I've got a flex joint, some generic muffler and a hot dog resonator, and a V-band to join the downpipe to the rest of the exhaust. So my first consideration was whether I run the V-band first off the dump and then the flex joint, or I run the flex joint off the dump and then the V-band. And so as you can see, I played around with ideas for positions of the flex joint and the small resonator to kind of visualize where things would fit because, well, let's be honest, there isn't a whole lot of room to play with under there when you're working with 3 inch tubing under an MX-5. Anywho, then I toyed with the idea of running the flex joint right on the dump and then the V-band after that and I decided that was the better solution than vice versa. So the next consideration was the positioning of the muffler. And, well, I just had to see if I could fit the big muffler in under the car, somewhere anyway, be it just after the gearbox or even somewhere closer to the diff, but it just wasn't meant to be. Maybe a smaller muffler with a smaller diameter tube could work in a different situation, but not this time. And now, it's time to start melting metal. And time for my first mistake. Uh, I discovered later that I really should have used the TIG to join the V-band to the flex joint as the MIG left a whole bunch of splatter which I needed to clean up later. Lesson learned for next time at least. And I've tacked these two together onto the turbo downpipe. I'll take the turbo set off later from the car and uh, fully weld that up, but for now a whole heap of tacks will keep it more than secure. So the next step is to make the other side of the V-band up to the resonator and to do that, I've got to cut a section of straight tube to fill the gap between them. So, I've marked a cut line at the masking tape. So I'll get that all cut up and we can burn it all together. A fairly straightforward cut, I'll give it a quick clean up. And it's time to weld these together. And here you can see what I meant earlier about using the MIG for the V-bands. Not a good idea. Check out the amount of splatter that we end up with after I get a heap of tax in here. Well, that ganky splatter is now all cleaned up on the V-band. Also note, it's always a good idea to keep the heat in mind when welding a V-band as you don't want them to warp. In my case, these are just some tacks at the moment, so I'm not putting a whole lot of heat into it, and I'm welding it on a surface that is a thick metal table, so it helps dissipate the heat quite nicely. Anywho, I'll go ahead and weld the resonator on, and we can see how it all fits on the car. Woo! First section is on the car and held in place with a stand, and it looks pretty neat. If I shift the camera angle around, you can see what sort of angles and space we've got to work with here, and the clearances, which there isn't a whole lot of. We'll need to now look at a few kinks in the tube to get it in, under, and around the differential. So, 
First thing is to throw a small bend in after the resonator as it exits the tunnel area. However, I think I'm going to turn this 45 degree bend, bend into more of an S bend. To do so, I'll cut right down the middle and flip one end 180 degrees. And with that cut done, here you can see the sort of idea I have in mind. So now I'll tack this up quickly and the result is a rather nice smooth transition. I've also cut a 4 inch length of pipe as I needed to add a short straight section to come out of the resonator and so I'll tack that on as well before we put the whole lot into the car. And with that now in place, you can uh, you can see how it perfectly curves around to match up with the path we need it to take to get around the diff. I've also slightly lifted up the tube here where I can, uh, as it makes for a better clearance away from the flat floor that will go on the car later. Looking really good so far. The other thing to note here is the ground clearance from this angle. You can see that even with the three inch tube, the exhaust is certainly no lower than the frame rails, and towards the rear of the car, it's actually even higher than the lowest point of the power plant frame. So overall, I'm pretty happy given the tight space we do have to work with. The next thing that is a bit in the way is the subframe brace mounting points on the subframe, uh, which you can see here, I've actually cut a bit away to help with the clearance. And we can now keep the pipework running through and around the diff. I needed a short section here to get sort of towards the drive shaft before we need to put another bend in. So I'll get this quickly tacked in place. Now for a light change of tact and well, let me give you a moment to guess just what the hell I'm doing here. Okay, what did you guess? Well, if you guessed cut the entire boot floor out to make room for the rear of the exhaust, then yes, you were correct. Also, there's a small weight saving here as the boot floor was, if I remember correctly, about four kilograms. Oh, and the dodgy cardboard wall, well, that's there just to try and keep the bulk of the angle grinder dust out of the main cabin of the car. So, with the boot cut out, I'm now able to mount the rear muffler where I want it. And while it may not be ideal to have it quite up that high uh, from a weight distribution perspective, it does give me a lot of flexibility for a future rear diffuser design. Uh, whatever I may end up going with, I'm not entirely sure yet. Currently, the muffler is just sitting on a block of timber, and there's a gap between it and the rest of the exhaust. So, let's get the gaps filled. I've tacked this together just at the right length and cut it to an angle. Then I need to get it around the diff and lined up directly towards the muffler. And so now, all I've got is one short four inch gap, which I need to be filled with a single section of tube, which I've cut out and I'll tack onto the muffler now. back under the car and I need to think about exhaust mounting. For the downpipe itself, I wigged up this funny shaped bracket which bolts directly to the gearbox. This will be welded to this large U-bolt clamp 
and should support the weight of the turbo and help keep everything quite sturdy. This is the only fully solid mount that I'll have for the exhaust system. The others will be, uh, the bracket is now all welded up and can go back on the car. For the other mounts of the exhaust, I'm thinking a shape that looks a little something like this. I'll have one bolted here and another further down under the car. And in steel, it looks something like so. With that all done, the fundamental exhaust setup is completed. However, I do need to remove the whole lot off the car and finish all the welding. You can see the setup is reasonably straight flowing with only a few kinks necessary to get the exhaust fitting nicely and in fact there's already some rust spots showing so I will have to clean those up shortly as well. Let's get to work on finishing off all the welds and then we can get onto the next exciting part of the process. Ah, for these welds I did most of them with the new TIG welder to help me get some practice in. Now, while I was at the paint shop buying the paint for the Fastback, which you may have seen in the previous episodes, uh, I got a little distracted looking at the shelves and I noticed this high temp white paint. And I thought it might be a good choice for the exhaust to help with preventing corrosion and keeping it looking neat. So I gave the whole exhaust a sand, a scrub and a wipe down to remove any dust and oil and machining grease and whatever. And I got to spraying. The result was a pretty unique and different matte white finish. It's really kind of cool. And well, I'm usually partial to painting things black, uh, but this white is certainly appealing. I'm hoping this will keep the exhaust nice and fresh and happy, and uh, it looks a bit nicer than ugly, dirty, raw steel. Oh yeah, and I painted the tip silver for shits and giggles as well. Now, the final phase of the exhaust, heat wrap. I'm a big fan of this stuff. Particularly when heat management is important, I feel like it really works. And I like to use these screw type clamps to hold the stuff in place because, well, they do the job really well. So let's get the box open and wrap this exhaust. Now this is the 2 inch by 50 foot length of DEI titanium wrap. Probably one of the more expensive options out there. Uh, and this length was about enough to do almost the whole exhaust system. With the wrap all on, the result looks pretty sexy. And this also means the exhaust is finished. That was probably a good day or three of work for me to get it all mocked up, welded, painted and wrapped. Uh, it should be just quiet enough that I don't have any issues with noise restrictions at our local racetracks and the heat wrap should keep things under control and not fry the flat floor. Well, that's it for this video. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Be sure to have a look at our website and check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching Beavis Motorsport. If you enjoyed the video and you like what you see, I'd really appreciate it if you'd help me out, give the video a like, subscribe to our channel, share the video with your mates, and why not check out some of our other content. Anyway, folks, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.